What's going on, yo? I hope everybody's doing good. Um, Ura to my Marines out there. Simplify. Keep holding it down, okay? <laughs> to all the branch of services, thank you for your service. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't got nothing against y'all, man, you know? But, uh, Marines are Marines. Sorry. Can't help it. <laughs> anyway <laughs> okay let me stop let me stop let me stop let me stop but um i just want to tell you guys man you know just continue to trust god in all things okay i am excited because you know why when you have come to understand the love of god it is so empowering okay and understand the grace of god it is completely empowering that is joy that comes from knowing christ you know that is joy from understanding his grace, what he actually did for you, what that means to you, you know? Imagine going to the court. You committed an, an offense, right? You go to the courthouse. And in the court, you have been charged, okay? It's a serious offense. You, you've been charged. You already know your life is over. You already made up your mind, oh, I'm so done for. Suddenly... They say, well, the judge says, okay, well, unless you pay this X amount of money for bail, you cannot walk around free. You're going to stay in jail, okay? But if you pay this X amount of money, it is so excruciatingly high that you can't even afford it. None of you can afford it. It was just too much. You don't have that kind of money, so you're stuck. But someone stood up and said, judge, how much is it again? This. Okay, I'm going to pay for that person. Random person. I'm going to tell you what happens right away. Your eyes shift to that person right away in shock. <gasps> and then instantly you are in complete gratitude to this person. You get what I'm going at right now? This gratitude is not because you deserved. They don't, I mean, you haven't deserved it. But they paid it. For you so you can be free again you know your life is done it's over for you but it paid that fine so that you can be free and the judge said because this man paid this fine for you i will legally let you go free and you are thanking the judge but you're also thanking the man that paid the fine for you and you'll be like what can i do to repay this back and he says nothing just be thankful. There is something that happens here because that's something you can never forget. Likewise, when you have understand how wretched of a person you are, that would be like, you know, how we say like, you know, like the ghetto, you know, this dude's wretched or this girl's wretched, whatever the case may be. Let me just get really down. Like how ratchet you are, okay? If you understood exactly how ratchet you are and that God can see a ratchet jacked up person like you and say, I want her. I want him. I'm going to save them anyway. I know society look at you and say, what a horrible person. Ill. You are unsavable. You are doomed and gloom. It's over for you. But God says, I still love you and you have an opportunity here. My son died for you too. You see, there is a reason why God picked. If you really watched all the people that Jesus picked, they were not perfect. Not one of them are. Okay? Now, look at the, the bloodline. Or should I say, not the bloodline, but uh, the generational tree counting back down with Jesus. And you see the errors of so, some of the people mentioned. None of them were perfect. But do you know what's important here? All the way down to earth, all the way down to Adam. Adam sinned, right? So he's not perfect either. He was before he sinned, but he did sin. Do you see what I'm saying here? There is gratitude that comes, except for you cannot repay God back for what he did for you because there is nothing 
you can conjure up to pay that back. I don't care how many homeless people you feed today. It can never repay for that. I don't care if you starve yourself for, for the rest of your life. Say, I'm not going to eat because you know what? I'm just going to give all my food away to everyone. You cannot repay that back. There is nothing you can do to repay back what Jesus has done. Nothing. Nothing. So why then do you keep trying to tell people that in order for them to be saved, clean yourself up, stop sinning, to remain saved. What is eternity again? Is it eternity? What is everlasting? Hmm, everlasting. The same word, everlasting. God says, I am from everlasting to everlasting. So when he said, I'm giving you everlasting life, just like you said, everlasting uh, 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 punishment, okay? As in hell, okay? But then it's everlasting life. That is from no end. Do, do you get what I'm saying here? You have to understand what everlasting means. You'll stop with all this wordplay, okay? You have to take Jesus for his word, okay? His word is true and perfect. I could care less of anyone's interpretation. I open the Bible, and you know what happens there? I don't rely on my in interpretation either. Right away, I'm praying and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal every single truth, reveal all truth. But not only that, I'm asking for wisdom and discernment concerning the scripture I'm going to read. Why is that important? Because if you don't have the wisdom and discernment, truth can be facing you in the face, but you can't even discern it. But you have to trust God and trust that God will reveal the truth to you because you're seeking the truth. You want to know him. You know? I used to rail against grace preachers for the longest because I thought that was whack. I thought, you know, when people talk about Osas, the first thing I say is, oh, you need... You're trying to give people license to sin. D don't know where that came from because I never seen one person. I just follow the trend where everyone is saying it, so it must be true. If what everyone repeated the same thing about you and said, this is who you are, it doesn't matter if you're saved. They will keep telling everyone, this is who you are. And every time they see you, yeah, look at them. You used to be a thief. You're still a thief. Look at you, thief. You'd be like... I mean, a reformed person. No, you a thief. That will start angering you eventually. Okay? I don't care how. You say, oh, that, that's not. It will start getting on your last nerve. You'll be like, okay, first of all, that's not who I am anymore. That was like years ago. They'll be like, no, you're still a thief. you a liar. you a liar. Look at this liar right here. Look at this cheater right here. Look at this uh, coveter right here. I mean, you name it. If all they do is acknowledge you based on your past, none of us will have any clean record at all. But thank you, Jesus, that he wiped all that clean. Bam! Bam! Wiped it all clean. Completely. Smacked it away from us. So that doesn't define you anymore. It does not. So stop living in a life condemning yourself because you think you're not good enough. If God thinks you're good enough and died and gave his son, to die for you, then you were good enough, okay, to receive his free gift of salvation. Stop listening to people telling you must work for it. You don't have to work jack for it. No. Let the Holy Spirit lead you after you become saved. But how can he do that? Get into the word of God. Pray. Stop listening to man, y'all. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit for understanding, for wisdom, for discernment. And also to reveal every single truth to you. Because you want to learn about God. That's how the truth comes to you, y'all. You seek God, he will reveal himself to you. Okay? God loves you, man. Stop with all this, you know, jumping, you know, hoops and stuff, man. Stay focused, okay? Jesus is coming soon. And the fact that he's coming soon... And there's so many confusion out there. What is the gospel? This is the gospel, okay? Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. He is without sin. 
was born of a virgin. He is perfect in all things. Was tempted for 40 days. The Bible recorded three events, but it told you he was tempted for 40 days and yet without sin. Okay? Not even a sin of thoughts. None. Without sin. He was the perfect sacrifice. He fulfilled our law because no one could do it but him. So all these people that want to refer back to the law, you already failed at that because only Christ will fulfill the law, not you. And I could really care less. You put your comment on my page, I'm going to block you like I've always been doing and remove that comment because you're not going to poison other people who want to hear about God with your arguments. I don't have time for that. The Bible is very clear. Either you believe it or you don't. People make up their own doctrines, you know. Do you know why it's called a deception? End time deception is this. Mixing lies with truth. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That is the gospel. That is the gospel. Okay? Believe it and thou shalt be saved. That's the requirement. Believe the gospel and thou shalt be saved. And then let the Holy Spirit lead you from there. Okay? By reading God's words and praying. You want to have fellowship with God after that. Okay? It is important. That's the only way you're going to grow. Because it's too much evil in this world and it's too much deception. Okay? Feed yourself the word of God and pray. So you could draw closer to him even more. God bless.